TikTok is everywhere. And yes, folks, we are now giving financial and real estate advice in a 60 second TikTok video. Are you kidding me? Well, we've got some TikTok videos that we have to react to. One on adjustable rate mortgages being the way to do it. And the other, why the hell are you putting 20% down? All right, Mike, what'd you find? Yeah, so this is an interesting fellow right here. And in his defense, I, I like to give people the benefit of the doubt until I've seen enough of their content to pass judgment. In his defense, uh, you know, people will clip up 20 seconds out of a longer interview, pull it out of context. This might not be his official opinion. It might just have been the 20 second clip, though it looked like it was from a TikTok with his name on it, a TikTok account. Mm. But anybody can make a TikTok account with your name on it. So I won't hold his feet to the fire too bad. That being said, the portions that they chose to clip out about adjustable rate mortgages and not putting a bunch of money down seemed a little interesting. So I thought you might want to react to them. So if you're ready, we'll uh, we'll jump right in. There you go. Let's do it. The most common mistake I see people make when buying real estate is just being hell bent on this idea of putting 20% down. The reality is you really shouldn't put 20% down unless you absolutely have to. And here's the reason why, because for every $10,000 you put down, it's really only lowering your payment about 50 bucks a month. So it's not really making that big of a difference. You're really better off keeping that money to pay off debt, make other investments, or just keep it for emergencies. Now, again, short form content, you can tell they, they cut them off in the middle of the statement right there. But I wanted to get your initial reaction to that. Uh, well, again, it's kind of math based. Um, again, every 10,000 bucks, 50 again, assumes interest rate. You know, you, you, you can't, you know, you reserve. I mean, there's so many ways I can look at that. My natural reaction is we're investors. We have to put 20 percent down. I actually think, again, this may be taken out of context. He may have been talking to homeowners. Which could do zero, three and a half, five, you know, all all the above. Um, so again, I I I will agree that twenty percent isn't written in stone for homeowners. I agree going down to the bare minimums and having no reserves is stupid. Uh, but as investors, uh, we want to get the best loans and best rates, which today probably means twenty five percent down. And if you're going to go get an F, you know, a a conventional loan. You just expect it. So my guess is that clip was taken out of a context of homeowners. Um, that's my guess. Yeah. So that was the clip that was going viral on TikTok, had a lot of views, a lot of comments on it. And that's what made me click on the profile and look at a sure. few other pieces of content that he had. And I thought, you know, okay, seller finance deals. I've done seller finance deals with less than 20% down. I have no problem. Oh, yeah. So I'm, I'm not against it, but let me see what else this guy has to say. Is he legit or is he questionable? And that's what brought us to his video on adjustable rate mortgages. So uh, I'll jump into that. Oh, no. You want to know how you can literally game the real estate system? And it's 100% legal and not talked about enough. See, traditionally, people usually buy a house with a 30-year fixed rate mortgage. This is where your interest stays the same for 30 years. But there's an alternative loan known as an adjustable rate mortgage. Now, this is a modified version of the 30-year loan, but the interest rate the first few years is lower than the average market rate. And when you add that up, it will save you thousands in interest and lower your monthly payment. Now, Mike... I think he forgot um, where the rate adjusts later and maybe your payment can double. So why don't you remind us about 2007, 2008 and what that looked like for people? <laughs> oh, man. So um, this breaks one of my tenants, uh, certainly as an investor and, and for me, at least as a homeowner. One of the things I want to do with any of my investments is I want to do everything I can to de-risk it. Uh, I want I want you to ask anybody in Canada or the UK or Australia today. Those countries do not offer 30-year mortgages. We are likely uniquely positioned to take advantage of 30-year mortgages. And um, I will say in this gentleman's defense, for 40 years, the adjustable rate mortgage was the right answer. We had 40 years of, generally speaking, declining rates. The party is over. We got lazy. We we didn't, you know, we forgot the 1970s, the 1980s, where again, you could look at interest rates going up for a decade. Good luck trying to refi that. There are people in Canada, the UK and Australia that are going to lose their freaking home because of an adjustable rate mortgage. That's today, let alone going back to 2006, where 50% of loans, 5-0, 
were adjustable rate mortgages. That 2006 origination was the worst vintage on record. It had the highest defaults because they were adjustable rate mortgages. They went from a teaser rate of 171819 to 6789%. And unfortunately, they were underwritten at 1.9, not at 9. Today, that's illegal. But no, this goes against everything I believe. You need to de-risk your investments. One of the risks is an interest rate shock to the upside. Rates don't only go down. They can go up. And if they go up, you could lose your house. Why would you ever? No, mm -mm. I hate adjustable rate mortgages. Yeah. And so, again, the individual on TikTok who's posting this is named Mark Neely. And again, they could be posing as this guy. It could be the real guy. It's very hard to figure out if someone is the actual verified account. It's tough. Mm -hmm. um, but in the comment section of that video, somebody said, isn't this the exact reason why the housing market crashed in 2008? And the creator, or at least whoever runs this account, says, no, those were subprime mortgages. They're completely different. Is there much of a difference here between adjustable rate mortgages and subprime mortgages, or were they kind of the same thing? No, that's just lazy, lazy discussions. Um, first off, a lot of the defaults in 06 were what was called Alt-A. So there's prime, Alt-A, and subprime. But generally speaking, those are credit scores. Alt-A was for people with good credit, but they wanted to underwrite it differently. It's an alternative structure. Yes, there were subprime borrowers, you know, 600 credit scores getting loans, but there were plenty of prime borrowers, plenty. I would argue that probably 50 to 60% of the defaults were prime borrowers who had an Alt-A adjustable rate mortgage. You could have a credit score of 850, which is perfect. I had, So I'll even give you a real example. I had an executive, and I wrote about it in my first book, One Rental at a Time. Who, who brought me in his office and told me he was going to buy four rentals in Louisiana. This was after Katrina that had some unique you know, tax rules. And he was bragging that because of his credit score and his income, he could afford $1,000 a month in negative cash flow. Yikes. He had an adjustable Alt-A mortgage that once it reset, he's like, nope, let these properties go. He destroyed his credit for seven years. Because of Alte. So no, that's a lazy response. Yeah, I, I think um, as interest rates, if interest rates spike into the sixes and the sevens, some of the discussions we had earlier, as interest rates go up, people will try to come up with creative solutions to not feel the pain of those higher payments today. Um, I was recently doing a reaction video to one of the crash bros talking about adjustable rate mortgages being at an all-time high. Of course, I had to go and dissect the fact that, well, it's ticking up slightly because of higher interest rates, but it's nothing compared to how many were adjustable rate mortgages in 2007, 2008. That's just a lie. Anybody right. who says that is lying. They um, were 50% of originations in 06. They were 2% in 21. Today, they're 11. 11 is not bigger than 50. I don't care who the hell. Right. That's just right. freaking a lie. And that's the conclusion that I drew. Um, but again, the pressure to even go from two to 11 is because as rates go up so much, people want to figure out how to get around those higher payments. And so my advice to them would They're be- buying the house and dating the rate. This is such a gambling strategy. It's not smart at all. Yeah, exactly. And I hear that talked about all the time. People throw that term, that, that phrase out there casually, like it's common, like everybody's doing it. It's no big deal. It is a big deal. It will crush your cash flow, turn a property into an alligator property, and worse, as you just told us the story about, possibly bankrupt you. Yep. There you go. Well, that was all the videos that I had for this session, Mike. As always, it's fun doing this with you, and I guess we'll just see you next week. There you go. And oh, by the way, Happy New Year. <laughs> to you too. Thanks.